going to go ahead and um, call the Building Zoning and Economic Development Committee to order. It is April 10th. Um, clerk, would you take roll, please? Chairperson <coughs> Patty Smith. Here. Vice Chair Shwada Bade. Here. Alderman Carl Franco. Here. Alderman Mike Seville. Here. Alderman Bill Donnell. Here. I present. Thank you. Uh, my first order of business is 24-0229, approval of the minutes from the Building, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee being held on March 27th, 2024. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Franco, second by um, Alderman Seville. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion moves forward. Uh, Clerk, do we have any public comment? We have no one signed up today. Thank you so much. Our first item on our agenda is 24-0217, an ordinance approving an amendment to the plan description for parcel four and parcel five of the Lincoln Prairie Plan Development District on the property located south of Del Webb Boulevard, east of Eola Road and Route 30 and north of 111th Street. Could you Hello also there. read the second one in? Um, I certainly can, yes. The second item is 24-0218, a resolution approving a pl preliminary plan and plot of Lincoln Crossing South Subdivision located at southeast corner of Yellow Road and Del Webb Boulevard. Thank you. Uh, the subject property is approximately 140 uh, 7.6 acres of vacant lot um, located uh, south of Del Webb Boulevard, east of Eola Road, in Route 30, and north of 111th Street, which is parcel 4 and parcel 5 of the Lincoln uh, Prairie Plan Development District. Um, in April of 2021, um, you may recall that the City Council did approve a revision to the annexation agreement and the plan description. And under the, pl uh, the revised plan description, the subject property allowed for flex zoning, meaning that it could be either developed as traditional single-family residential development or age-targeted single-family uh, detached residential development. Um, this was to be determined at the plenary plat and plan time. So the petitioner is requesting um, approval of an amendment to that plan description for parcel four and five of the Lincoln Prairie Plan uh, Development District. Uh, development district. Um, the detail of the request includes amending the, pl the plan description to update the acreage of parcel four and five, and then to increase the maximum gross density of parcel four and five, and to clarify that parcel four or parcel five are permitted to be divided and segregated between parcels one and two at the developer's sole discretion for the purposes of determining the standards. Meaning that basically a portion of four um, could be Del Webb um, or the age targeted, and then it could also be um, traditional single family. Um, that was the intent all along. We're just clarifying that. Um, concurrently with the proposal, the petitioner is requesting approval of a plenary plat and plan on 33.726 uh, 33 acres. And I can pull that up for you. Um, uh, being uh, a portion of parcel four of the Lincoln uh, link for Lincoln Crossing South subdivision. Um, the proposal is to construct 97 traditional detached single family residential homes with a gross density of 2.88 dwelling units per acre. The development mimics the Lincoln Crossing uh, development with a mixture of 55 wide lot lots with a minimum lot size of 7,150 square feet and then 65 foot uh, wide lots with a minimum lot size of one uh, of 8,060 square feet. Uh, there are four outlots being proposed which are mainly located around the border of the subdivision to buffer the residential lots from the public right of ways and to the property to the south. A full access will be located off of Del Webb Boulevard into the property, and a fire lane will be built um, between lots 36 and 37, which will extend um, as part of a future development to the south. Um, until this occurs, lot 19 will have a temporary gated fire access onto Eola Road. Uh, per the annexation agreement, the petitioner is also 
um, widening the pavement to create a second lane, installing curb and gutter, and installing a sidewalk along the east side of Eola Road from Del Webb Boulevard to Route 30 as part of the development. In addition, a bike path is being constructed along Route 30 within the outlet. Um, stormwater detention has been previously constructed in the adjacent off-site uh, detention pond for this subdivision, and then the landscape and building elevations will be reviewed at uh, final plan and plat time. Um, however, the petitioner did indicate that the building elevations will be the same ones that they used in Lincoln Crossing, just north of this. With that, I can turn it over to the petitioner. They have a brief presentation, unless you have questions for me. <coughs> I have a, anybody have a question? I have a quick question. Um, so you, you uh, quoted the lot sizes. Are those sizes any different than ones that have currently been um, built on already? No, those are, are very are similar to They're the sizes. Pretty much the minimums are similar. So we're pretty much doing more of the same with Correct. just the, op the opportunity to be able to have the discretion of changing from one type of building to the other type, right? Yeah, so there's two different, the, in Lincoln Crossing, um, in the regular or the, the original Lincoln Crossing, there was two different types. Mm -hmm. um, so that is being consistent. The really the reason why we're asking for the plan description revision is because of the detention. Um, all of the detention is off site, so it makes the gross density look smaller or bigger than what it actually is because the detention is off site. So that's really the reason. But everything else, all the standards and all of everything else is being exactly or is exactly what Lincoln Crossing is. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Prechtel. I'm with Rose Nova and Whitaker. I'm here this afternoon on behalf of the petitioner, Pulte Home Company LLC, the contract pur purchaser of the subject property. I'm um, here with me also is Joe Ivanelli, um, civil engineer with Manhard Consulting. Um, as Tracy mentioned, we're here this afternoon requesting approval of an amendment to the plan description um, for parcels four and five in the Lincoln Prairie subdivision, and then approval of a preliminary plat and plan for Lincoln Crossing South. Um, Tracy's overview was excellent and um, encompassed most of everything I was going to say, so I'll try to keep it brief um, without repeating what she said. Um, so just to, to hit a few highlights on Pulte, um, Pulte is the third largest builder in the U.S. and Chicago area. Um, they've been building homes in the Chicagoland area since the 70s and sold over 700, 700 homes just last year. Um, they've had the top selling community in Chicagoland every year since 2017, and they are currently active in 16 different communities across Chicago. Um, just to touch on a little background on Lincoln Prairie, the property was next in 2002, but it remained undeveloped um, until Pulte entered the picture just a few years ago, um, and the city approved an annexation agreement amendment and plans for Pulte's um, Lincoln Prairie development. Uh, the total subdivision encompasses 500 acres is, and was divided into six separate development parcels um, as set forth in the plan description. Um, parcel 1, which is commonly known as Lincoln Crossing, um, consists of traditional single-family homes. Um, parcel 2, which is commonly known as the Dell Webb community, um, consists of single-family but age-restricted homes. Parcels 3 and 6 at the northwest and southwest corners of the subdivision are slated for future commercial development. And then finally, parcel 4 and parcel 5, five um, were slated for future, future residential development, but um, designated flux parcels, which I'll touch on more in just a minute. Um, the Del Webb and the Lincoln, Lincoln Crossing communities have been met with resounding success. Um, the Del Webb community which consists of 545 single-family age-restricted homes and just had its grand opening in 2023, um, has already closed on 109 lots to date. Um, likewise, Lincoln Crossing has also had um, great success. Um, it consists of 162 single-family homes and had its grand opening in 2022, already closing on 89 of those lots to date. Um, so it's been as a result of this success that Pulte is now back and has submitted plans to the city for Lincoln Crossing South, um, which consists of 34 acre, acres and parcel 4 of Lincoln Prairie. Um, so as I mentioned, per the plan description, parcel 4 and parcel 5 were designated as flex parcels, meaning they could be developed in conformance with the bulk regulations set forth for parcel 1 or Lincoln Crossing, or um, they could be developed 
consistent with the bulk regulations for pulti for parcel two, um, the age restricted single family we see in the Del Webb community. Um, the intent of these flex parcels was to promote development developmental consistency throughout the subdivision, while at the same time providing for that flexibility um, to develop the property with trends that we see in the market. Um, while that intent was there, we discovered a minimum density calculation requirement flaw um, on the way that that minimum down density was calculated in the plan description. Simply put, um, as Tracy mentioned, all of the stormwater detention was allocated to parcel one and parcel two. So now that we're back developing parcel three, parcel four, even though it's being developed with the same product, the same lot size, every other bulk restriction is the same. Um, it appears that the density is different between parcel one, parcel two, and parcel three, parcel four, even though it's not. Um, so that's why we're here today, I'm requesting an amendment to the plan description, increasing, increasing the densities for parcel four and parcel five to compensate for that um, stormwater allocation, um, which was shown there. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to you for any questions you may have. Questions? All right. Alderman Bay. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask like, if the price range will be same as uh, what is for age-restricted homes, or it's going to be different? It should be the same. Just, I, I, it's hard to say that with certainty, but considering that it's the same product, the same lot sizes, everything is the same across the board, I would imagine that it will be the same. And amenities will all be common? Correct. For all? Okay. And uh, are you planning there will be one HOA or there will be multiple? There will be so sub HOAs um, as the between the age restricted and then the traditional single family. Okay, okay. that's all. Is there a master association and subs or just subs? There would be there's a master and then subs between each. So each one will open two associations. Alderman Franco. I guess this would be more for for Tracy. Tracy, this this density metric, this new one, what subdivisions that we already have built recently would be similar to that? I'm trying to get a, like, imagine what that density looks like but based on some subdivisions I've already seen. Is there anything, like, close to that? And I always get a little nervous when we talk about density. But, you know, picturing in my mind, if, if there's something, can you think of anything offhand or, or add or anything? We haven't had a lot of single-family subdivisions lately right. um, being built, so I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, Prairie Meadows, aren't they yeah, the one I think Prairie Meadows would probably be the closest. Okay, and I'm um, a little bit familiar with that, even though they're not built yet. I'm, I'm a little more familiar. I'm just trying to get a mind, you know, because I always concerned about too much density. But yeah, and to visualize it. And you will not really think that this is much denser than any of the other things that are out there, mm -hmm. um, because the the detention ponds really are for the entire, for all of the residential. Um, the 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 middle detention pond, which um, is going to be the, the biggest one out there, um, it's going to look pretty big. So you won't be able to tell any difference between, I would say, this this portion of the subdivision um, to the north, to the Lincoln Crossing subdivision, if okay. that helps. All right. Okay. I'm just, I, was, I was just trying to figure out. When you mentioned Prairie Meadows, that kind of gives me a little bit more of an Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what yeah. Prairie Meadows is, but it's it's between that two and three okay. dwelling units per okay. acre. So it, it would, it's still going to be between that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Dinell. Thank you. So I was out there today. Yep. So it's, this new area is going to kind of look just like the old area? Correct. From, except for... Um, I'm looking at your illustration of the big blue. That's the big blue pond you're talking about. Correct, that big blue. So all of that is in another development, <laughs> another phase. So that's how it gets counted. Yeah, so basically what they did is instead of trying to do small ponds everywhere, they just combined all of the ponds for all of the subdivisions into, let's say, six or six ponds instead of having one for each small development. So that's why the overall detention is really, or the overall ponds are for all of the residential. So then I'm going to ask you to put your planner hat back on. I'm yep. kind of looking to the future. Uh, the parcel that's not part of this development to the <coughs> southeast, is that, I, I can't remember, that's not the landfill, is it? It is. It is. So it's going to stay there? It is 
going to stay there, yeah. Do you know if there's any plans for any kind of redevelopment of that? No, I have not heard anything. Okay. Where is that on that? Is that, that up in the corner? I don't know if you're going to see be able to see my thing right here. Okay. And are there homes currently built in that area, or is that to come? No, that's where the old um, landfill is, mm -hmm. so it would just stay. No, I mean that will back up to that. Um, there is some in Del Webb, mm -hmm. um, but um, there isn't currently. They haven't been built there yet. I'm sorry? They have not been built in that area right yet, correct? Correct. That's phase three of Del Webb, which they'll be coming in shortly for. And you can see that there is a couple that are going to back up to, to that area. It's very well bermed, so you don't really see anything. Um, it just looks kind of like a big hill. And in what phase is Del Webb in right now? They're in their phase two. Phase um, they are. Um, they have came or they've came to talk to us about phase three. Um, so I uh, am assuming that they will be in um, pretty shortly for phase three, mm -hmm. um, and they'll close on phase three, um, and then they'll continue on with phase, hopefully phase four and five or parcel four and five for the Doe Web project too. And I do have a question about the, the ponds, the smaller ponds. I don't remember um, when they first came to us. Was it always planned to be the way it is now? Yes. Okay. So yes. We, we haven't changed anything as far no. as the, the water no. goes. We just, uh, obviously when you're planning 500 acres, sometimes you mess up a couple of things. And I think that's, in this case, that's what kind of happened is that we just kind of missed um, because there was going to be how how it was going to be platted, and that there was going to be off-site de detention for these areas, that that's where we we kind of missed um, the gross density is going to be higher then. Any other? Um, and again, this is more curiosity <laughs> than anything yep. else. So um, I, I'm assuming the landfill was developed or was was created and maintained in another county we had no jurisdiction over. T um. I believe that is correct. But there never was a, like Settlers Hill had a redevelopment plan. Yeah, no, I don't believe that it has, it has ha had a redevelopment plan on it. I, I'm not sure, I don't know, Ed, do you know? But yeah, it's unincorporated, so I. I it's unincorporated Will County. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, thank you. Yep. Alderman Seville. And just a couple of follow-up questions of what was asked. Um, around the water features, can you, is there a bike path around the whole thing where you can go from point A to point B? Um, I don't recall if there is, is, I don't recall if there is a, there, there's paths throughout this whole development um, all that. through. Mm -hmm. um, and we are continuing this with Lincoln Crossing South. I do not believe that there is one right by the water. And I, can't recall actually you know what I take that back it's been it's not platted yet so that's probably why I don't recall because <laughs> it hasn't been platted that area right here so will any paths be along any water features there are some paths um in the back of the um what I'll call in the back of the amenity area in Del Webb um, I'm not sure if there is, there's obviously a pass all along the streets, um, and then there are, are some paths throughout Del Webb, um, all through Del Webb. Um, I do not recall if there is a path by the, the water features, and then the, the other, the southern water, water feature also is not in at this time. Okay. And then what is the price points again, minimum and maximum for some of these units? I'll take that, I'll have them answer that question. Um, I will do say though that we did ask them to put a bike path along Route 30, um, so they will be um, maintaining a private bike path and we would, we would like to have that continue all the way down to 111th. Great, okay. And there's a, a sidewalk in this, added in this, what we're looking at today, right? Yes, there are sidewalks throughout the, um, throughout the subdivision and, just, just and there's a sidewalk along um, the east side of Eola Road as well as mm -hmm. um, the south side of Del Webb. And to Boulevard. piggyback off of um, Alderman Seville, don't the, isn't the water running behind most of these homes so there probably won't be a 
path behind the homes. I that is I that's correct. That. Correct. There there is a the water is abutting a lot of these houses. Mm-hmm. So I don't recall if there was a bike path there. But like I said, this that phase has not come in yet. So we haven't really taken a, a full look at it. How far away that is if there's room for a bike path or not. And if I can just follow up, and are there um, sidewalks on both sides of the streets? Um, so there, there is sidewalks internally and on both sides of the street. Um, on Del Webb, there is a sidewalk on the south side, and I believe on the north side also. Um, on Eola, there will be a sidewalk on the east side, and then when the commercial develops, they will extend the bike path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So which school district will come? This is 308, 308 school district. And school buses will be there? Yeah, school district is aware of all of this happening. And they don't mind. Okay. Well, can I ask one more question before we get to the price points? I don't know. Are these streets private or public? Uh, private. The Lincoln uh, Crossing South would be public streets. Okay. Uh, all of the Del Webb are private streets. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. So we're not plowing their street. No, but we are for Lincoln Crossing. Yeah. But we are for Lincoln Crossing. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to give a comment. Uh, I did see the homes, and they are very beautifully done. The accessibility and everything is very, very nice. So it's good. It's We have opened some for no age restriction, and uh, can't wait to see them, too. Thanks. I do have one request. Just save me a lot. <laughs> I got a few more years here, <laughs> but it's right down the street. <laughs> Oliver Franco. So these ponds are pretty big. Yes. And I'm going to assume they're going to be used as aesthetically for whatever reason. Yes. Who's responsible for the maintenance mm-hmm. of those ponds? So I'll try to answer this, but I'll also let the petitioner answer it. Um, my understanding is that Del Web, the, the Del Web community is actually um, responsible for all of the maintenance of the ponds in a lot of the landscaping, especially along Del Web. Um, and then there is, uh, they have an agreement with Lincoln Crossing um, to help pay for that. That is my understanding, but I will I will turn it over to the petitioner so he can mm-hmm. tell me if I was wrong or well, not. <laughs> so that would be the HOA, right? The Homeless Association. Well, I would like to think that, yeah. Yeah, so it would be the Del Web HOA. Yeah, right. Yeah, the homeowners. Yes, the Homeowners Association. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure, because I got a, a, a subdivision out west that they're – Every year they spend five or six thousand dollars to because they use it for other things. It's really a retention pond, and um, they dredge it every year, so it's a money. And they always ask the city for money, but because there's no HOA there, so that's why I wanted to see who's on the hook if they want to go the extra mile and put boats on there, little docks and stuff like that, which they could do. But it should be the burden on them, not us. I just want to clarify that in advance. That's all. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple more questions. That's yes, go ahead. Alderman Franco. Uh, made me think of are, are there any public parks yeah. there is a public park in the Lincoln Crossing um, unfortunately this doesn't go down quite that far um, actually I think I have the other let me see if I have um, I don't know if you can see this but right here that's a four acre um, public park um, that Lincoln Crossing right and Lincoln here. I'm sorry, can you see right oh, here? Uh, I know oh, it's a okay. little small. Okay. Is it not coming? You see it. We see it. Okay. See it. Yeah. So that is a four acre park that will be shared by um, Lincoln Crossing and Lincoln Crossing South. And, and maintained be, by the park district? Uh, it is maintained by the park district, yes. So, and again, maybe this isn't a good question for you, but golf carts? Do you have to have a golf cart if you live in a Del Webb de- development? Uh, they, they can. We did put that they in there. They can drive them on their private streets, but can they drive them on the public streets? Because I do get this question about other people driving golf carts. Um, they, I mean, the the ability is that, or what we'd like to see is they actually use it to go over to the commercial at some point. So there might be a little bit of public 
uh, public streets where the the carts would go, but they could stay on the sidewalks up until that, and then they they can get onto the there's a bike path that is wide enough for them. Well, I, I had an opportunity to be in Florida recently. Everybody has a golf cart. They're fully licensed. They have rearview mirrors. They have all this stuff, um, and they drive them on the streets, and it's legal. And I just wondered because I've had yeah. some complaints about other agencies driving their golf carts on our streets and i just was curious where we're, where we're at yeah we did put that in the annexation agreement that del webb can have car, uh golf carts Good. but tracy they won't be our streets because they're private streets they are private streets yeah. but if they do decide to take them over to the there might be a little section where it turns into public yeah I'll let them ride them i have a follow-up okay. question for what Alderman Dinelli asked. Uh, so does this develop in totality meet our park district standards for 10 acres for every, th every thousand people? Yeah, I mean, the Del Webb has a $13 million uh, facility on their property and a huge uh, pond and, um, and stuff, which they could talk a little bit more about. And then the then we did ask who we did talk to the Fox Valley Park District and ask them if they wanted another park here and they did not. Did they take did they take any cash instead in lieu of Yeah. So um so yes, they they are taking um the cash instead um and actually they are going to um allow the city to use that to extend a bike path on Wolf's Crossing um to uh, to the Naperville, to the Naperville side, um, so down Wolf's Crossing, uh, just over the tracks to the Naperville side, um, where we would meet up with their bike path, um, and then it would be a regional path connection. So that little part is missing right now. Um, so we have been working with uh, the park district to use that land cash for that extension. Okay. Um, Alderman Bay, and then we'll get a presentation or from the petitioner. Yeah. So um, there is a school next to the subdivision? There is. There and is uh, uh, actually two. There is Wills Crossing Elementary School and Bernarsic Junior High. And there will be safe route for walking? Yes, we put a bridge over it. I don't know if you've been down there, but the bridge is beautiful, so you should go see it. Okay. <laughs> it's a beautiful pedestrian bridge. Okay, it really is. That's Very good. Nice. Thank you. That's all. No, I thought you said the is the petitioner. Are you finished with us? Price, oh, I'm I finished. Think, yeah. If you guys have any more questions, price, though. about the price points. Yes. Oh, so oh you're price points. Price. Um, I think it was three. So for the Dell Web, there's three different elevations being offered. The price points of the three are 381, starting at 381, 449, and 533. Um, and then if you include Lincoln Crossing South, so the total for both. The average sales price between the two is six hundred. Any other questions? So moved. Second. We have a motion by um, Alderman Franco, second by Alderman Seville. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion moves forward five zero. Thank you, guys. And that's for both items, right? That is for both items. Do we need to read them both separately? Do we have to take two motions? Should it? Yep. Okay, so the first one we just did 240217. We had um, a motion and a second by Alderman Franco, second by Alderman Seville. Um, 5 0 vote to move forward. The second one, 240218. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. A move, uh, motion by Alderman Franco, second by Alderwoman Bade. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion goes forward 5 0. The last item that we have here is 24-0223, a resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute an agency agreement with the state of Illinois Department of Transportation Div Division of Aeronautics and a not to exceed agreement for construction phase engineering services in the amount of 52,200 with Crawford, Murphy and Tilly incorporated for the overlay Southeast Quadrant Airport Perimeter Roadways Phase 2 Project ARR 
4565 located at the Aurora Municipal <clears throat> Airport. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. Welcome. Steve Andrus with the Airport Division. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but in February of last year, the City Council approved um, the design phase engineering portion of this project with Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly. It's uh, over a year later. Now we're coming back with um, the construction phase engineering agreement with Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly, as well as the agency agreement between the City of Aurora and uh, the State of Illinois. Um, if you read the materials, our maximum share is $31,000. And so, not to belabor the point, but when we come to you with the design phase, let's say that's $50,000, we only pay, our, the most that we pay is $31,000 for the, the entire project, for example. So, uh, once we pay our consultant for that design fee, if in fact that eclipses this $31,000. We don't pay any more for the project. Point, point being is that now we're asking for, to, for the city to approve an expenditure of $58,000. We're not spending any more money. That's all part of the project money, uh, and that all gets reimbursed back to the city. And again, our maximum is $31,000. So, Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Bates, second by Alderman Seville. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion moves forward 5 0. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. We have no reason for a closed motion session. To motion to adjourn second. by Alderman Franco, second by Alderwoman Bates. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.